Welcome back. Ontario's Integrity Commissioner is recommending the province's housing minister, Steve Clark, be reprimanded for his role in the province's controversial Greenbelt land swap. Now, in a report released today, the commissioner called the land swap a, quote, rushed and flawed process marred by lack of oversight. I'm joined now by Marit Stiles, the leader of the Ontario NDP. Uh, Ms. Stiles, good to see you. So we've got the Auditor General report. We have the Integrity Commissioner report. We have pressure building from your party, from the Green Party, from the Liberals, for the Premier to fire Steve Clark, essentially, all this building, and uh, the Premier said today he's not going anywhere. There's not going to be any kind of reprimand for him, and he trusts him with this process moving forward. Your reaction, and are we at a stalemate here? Well, first of all, this report is extraordinary, and you're right, it's one of many reports we've seen uh, lately, and it shows a massive breach of trust. Uh, Steve Clark, the minister, clearly broke the law. He deliberately deceived Ontarians. So I don't think there's any question. Uh, Doug Ford, the premier, needs to fire him. He needs to kick uh, Mr. Clark out of cabinet. And most importantly, he also needs to return all the land uh, to the Greenbelt, which is what this is all really ultimately about. Why is uh, Ryan Amato uh, resigning not enough? That is, of course, Steve Clark's chief of staff who resigned recently due to the fallout of this. Well, the Integrity Commissioner's report, which I, I requested, by the way, uh, you know, it's, it's 200 pages long, and it very clearly shows, and the uh, Integrity Commissioner himself uh, says very clearly that Mr. Clark has responsibility here, uh, that he deliberately deceived Ontarians. Um, but let's be clear as well. I mean, it, this goes to the top, right, to the Premier, who has a lot to hide. Right. And so I think in not calling for the minister to resign, that, that says something about Mr. Ford as well. Yeah, I mean, and other than coming on programs like this one and, you know, saying uh, publicly that you want him to go. What else can the NDP really do? What else can the other parties do yeah. to compel the premier to change direction here? Because clearly, as I said, once again, that statement he put out uh, today after the report came out saying that Steve Clark is staying in his job. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, first of all, Ontarians are really fed up. I'm hearing that all across the province. People uh, have lost their trust in this government and their integrity. And, uh, and they want answers. And they're seeing some of those answers in these reports, which have both very clearly outlined what needs to take place. Uh, it is, I'd say, unforeseen that a minister that has clearly broken the law like this would be allowed to stay in cabinet. Uh, and so I think this is now on Mr. Ford, right? Mr. Ford has to remove him. Uh, that's the only way he comes close to be rebuilding that trust in Ontarians. Um, and he has to put the land back because at the end of the day, that's what this is about, right? It's about the province unilaterally stepping in and removing massive swaths of really prime farmland and ecosystems that are really important here as we're confronting the impact of climate change. So it's super important that that gets returned because this whole this whole situation shows, you know, how deeply uh, dug in the premier is, and I think that's because the premier has a lot to hide here. And there will be further reports. Let's not forget the well, integrity commissioner. I've also asked him to investigate uh, Mr. Ford for breaches of the Members Integrity Act. Well, uh, something that could potentially move this forward is an RCMP investigation. We know that the RCMP are looking into whether or not a full investigation is warranted. Is that something that you want to see? Is that something that you do think can move the dial? Well, you know, absolutely. I'm, I'm hoping and looking forward to the RCMP conducting an investigation. Uh, what we've seen in this report, there's lots of indications in here of direct involvement by the Premier. Uh, we know that uh, Mr. Amato, the Chief of Staff, was given, you know, USB keys and envelopes at dinner parties, that these same developers that are making to the tune of $8.3 billion off these land swaps our donors to the Conservative Party sat at the Ford family's uh, private functions. And, and there's every indication, there's texts and references to phone calls by the Premier. The Premier is hiding uh, his private phone records and emails and emails have been deleted. I mean, it's a mess. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's really sad because Ontarians deserve better than this. Uh, from their government, and Mr. Ford continues to dig in. I, I can't understand his thinking here because it's, to me, it's
it's just building uh, that growing sense uh, among Ontarians that this government isn't really looking out for their interests at all. I've got one quick minute left. Uh, you know, we've seen the Premier dig in on some issues, like cutting Toronto City Council, for example. Uh, what happens next year? How does this change moving forward? And what do you think the next chapter in this Greenbelt saga is? Well, you're going to see more reports coming out. There's no question. Uh, more information, more investigations. I know a lot of journalists are also uh, looking very carefully at this. We in the official opposition NDP are going to keep at it uh, because, you know, this to me speaks to the, the very bare minimum that Ontarians should expect of their government, which is answers, trust, <laughs> You know, knowing that they're actually working for you, not for a bunch of really wealthy developers who are just going to get wealthier. I mean, this isn't about housing. And, and that is what's on the mind of most Ontarians right now is, is the housing crisis. That, this isn't about housing. The Premier's trying to hide behind that. But, you know, Ontarians know better than that. And I think we're going to see more reports, including from the Integrity Commissioner, possibly from the RCMP investigation. Um, but at the end of the day, the Minister broke the law. It's in the report. And the Premier needs to fire him right away. Thank you.